something else that's rare is, uh, having someone on the board of directors for the NWA who wasn't a promoter. I'm talking about Paul Bosch, who we remember was a famous promoter from Houston, but by this point he's not. And Meltzer would report that he believes this is the first time a non-promoter has ever been on the board of the NWA. He would continue in the past. The board was the group that would decide on the world champion. However, I'm sure that decision is basically all in Jim Crockett's hands. So this may be more of a figurehead position and that the NWA will use Bosch for his name value in the Houston area. And Meltzer would say that while he's told that Bosch will be involved with the NWA in Houston, starting on the March 4th card, he's not returning as a promoter and has no financial interest in the shows. Paul Bosch is someone who was near and dear to Bruce Pritchard's heart. The guy who helped broke him in the business sort of his uh, father figure in the wrestling business. When he first came in before he, uh, eventually jumped to work for Vince in the WWF legendary promoter from Houston. One of the most respected guys in that era. And now he's on the board but not a promoter. Did it matter here in 88 at all? No. Uh, Crockett, Crockett had to control the title and the NWA. Uh, Paul was a figurehead and I, uh, concur. Bruce looks upon Paul as a father figure, certainly someone instrumental in Bruce's career. And for that, I usually reserve my comments regarding Paul because I was never a big fan of his really. No, he treated me like shit. Mm. He was just, he was disrespectful. Uh, and, uh, he didn't like my presence. He didn't like me being there helping cowboy because I wanted to modernize things a little bit. I wanted to upgrade, uh, it, it's all philosoph- philosophical, uh, but he was never, I'll give you an example. So I go do commentary with him on a, at a Houston show on a Friday night. I love going down there and I love the Houston shows. Coliseum was a great atmosphere. And they had all that tradition and, and all those regulars. It was just fun as hell. And then Bruce and I had a lot of fun in, in, uh, in, uh, in Houston. There was a Ramada Inn at the Javi airport that is legendary for a lot of things. And of course, that's where we all headed as soon as the show was over on Friday night and everybody was there and many guests. It was amazing. Uh, but so I don't go crazy on Paul, but we're doing a match. He, he didn't want to spend any money. So we were using stick mics with no headsets, sitting at ringside in two folding chairs with no desk, nowhere to put your papers. And so we're sitting side by side at ringside or almost our feet are like could touch the ring easily, proper feet up. We chose to, and uh, I'm doing my I'm, cowboy says, look, we got JYD coming back. He's we're working this big hot program with somebody, whoever, whomever it was, might've been Butch Reed. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter of the story. And he said, I'm make sure that we get plenty of dog stuff in this commentary. We've got to get him established that he's going to be our moneymaker here in Houston. Okay. No big deal. I get that instructions like that all the time. I'm, I'm fine with it. I loved it. So I go out there and, and, uh, we've got one mic. There's gotta be some sharing here. Conrad, you got one mic, right? Guess who's holding, guess who's holding it. Ain't me. And so Paul, big hands, big, you know, so it's almost like we're children. So I would start to talk. He'd pull the mic away from me. Mm. So all of a sudden I didn't get my shit in to, to uh, that I was ordered to do by my boss about regarding our main event talent that we're going to push in that marketplace. And, uh, so I get back to the back after it's over and he said, and Bill basically says, what the fuck about pushing dog that you not understand? He didn't say shit about it. Every time you started to say anything, it, you, you just faded away. So I told him the story. I said, your goddamn partner. It's not me. It's not me whatsoever. He was very jealous of anybody else doing commentary. Uh, he had a massive ego. Mm. He was a wonderful man. As far as the things he did for the city of Houston and what he did for, for Bruce and for Tom, Bruce's brother, Tom Pritchard, one of the great coaches of all time still is, uh, I, I admire, but he, I can only judge somebody by Conrad in my, in my world on how they treat me. So, Cause I've had people that were, uh, that become friends of mine that were not popular choices for, uh, for others that are in my, in my group. So he didn't treat me well. And I'm not whining. I guess I'm whining about it. I'm, I'm just stating a story, but he wasn't the kind, gentle, benevolent, hundred percent guy. He had an ego. Uh, he, he felt like he owned wrestling in Houston you know, and it's like all those other guys, all the old wrestlers who become owners of territories believe that this fucking town is mine. It's all mine. McMahon the same way. The business is all mine. 
And it's a, it's a, it's a sick, egocentric, insecure mindset. And so again, I'm not going to make fans of people that, that were Paul Bosch aficionados and Meltzer's one Meltzer Bosch was one of the guys that gave Meltzer his inside education to wrestling because, uh, Dave has told me that Bill Watts has told me that and Paul Bosch has told me that. So, uh, there's a, he had, Paul had a lot of good traits, seriously, a lot of good traits, but he had a, a marketplace where he had great TV. He had no competition. You and know, all of a sudden he's, he, he's been in wrestling in Houston. I, I just didn't buy it. I, I don't know. I can't believe I never put this together, but I have heard that about Paul Bosch and Dave Meltzer, but I never really thought about the fact that Bruce sort of came up under Paul Bosch's wing. And then ultimately Bruce made a business decision and he left. Paul and went to work for Vince and, uh, the WWE well, before the, before that though, Conrad, uh, Bruce came to work for cowboy cause well, I got him this job. I'm with you on that. I guess what I'm saying is, um, Paul and, and, and Bruce never patched up their relationship. Paul still had very hurt feelings over all of that. And even whenever Bruce would try to reach out to him, you know, Paul never really had anything to do with him. So I just wonder if maybe some of that spilled over. Because if Paul was still communicating with, with Meltzer, maybe that's one of the reasons Meltzer doesn't like Bruce at all is, uh, the relationship with Paul Bosch. Couldn't tell you. Could be, could be strange. There's, the wrestling business makes for strange bedfellows, no doubt about it. So look, Paul did great things in the marketplace as a, uh, as a, I think in the, the rotary club and all these other type benevolent organizations, uh, he had a lot of contacts. You know, Jim McInvale, who a uh, gallery furniture, Mattress Mac, they call him, who gambles big time on the ball games. And he's all very ben- benevolent, charity oriented. Uh, he, he was one of, uh, Paul's, uh, uh, discoveries and put him in, in, and created a spot for him to do, uh, his, uh, his furniture store ads in the wrestling show. Cause I used to go to the studio and we'd do some cut ins or some things. Uh, and also, you know, Mattress Mac was always there to, to do a new spot. And then he had, uh, uh, the jewelry store, uh, IW marks, IW marks, big deal. I've been in a store many times. Mr. Marks, his, he and his family are wonderful people. So Paul did really good as far as building his brand, but let's not forget. He built a brand in his image because he believed his image was more important than anything else. And, uh, but I, again, he, he was from, I, I, I consider Bruce and Tom friends. And I know he was important at one time in their lives. So for that, I'm, I'm grateful for them, but Paul Bosch was like all of us, Conrad, all you, me, everybody else, we've all got our good days and our bad days and our good sides and our bad sides. And, uh, I just saw both sides of Paul and, but for whatever reason, over the years, a lot of people just don't want to admit what they saw. And, and sometimes what we saw from him was not a real nice person. <laughs> 